Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we have an interesting episode for you guys. So make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, as y'all are fully aware, last year was a year that was full of drama for ESPN. It was full of drama. There was one big scandal after the next. We had the Maria Taylor and Rick, Rachel Nichols drama, as y'all remember. Then, shortly after that, we had the Max Kellerman and Stephen A. Smith fallout with Max Kellerman uh, being removed from ESPN First Take. That was a bombshell, probably the biggest bombshell. Then, of course, we had the Stephen A. Smith uh, uh, Shohei Otani, Sho 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 Otani and the Nigerian players comments. We had that. And I think to round out the year, <laughs> they then there was uh, the comments that Sage Steele I had to make about Barack Obama, and I, that was a video we came out, and I and I had some very strong opinions about the comments that she, that she had to make about black fathers. It was something that really, really irritated me. Uh, so, and we we also uh, touched on that. And it was just basically one thing after the other, right? It was just one one drop, one you know, just one story uh, after the other. And now, a year later or so, it seems as if the dust uh, has finally settled, and now some former. Um, employees at ESPN are coming out and really making their thoughts clear about what they thought about the drama that the network experienced last um, last year. And former ESPN employee Michelle Beadle, who was on there, she was you know she was really really good. Uh, you know she's finally breaking her silence on the Rachel Ni Rachel Nichols uh, situation uh, with the network. And as y'all know, Rachel Nichols no longer works uh, for ESPN. And she was recently on a show here. It's called the Ariel Helwani. Um, uh, show on YouTube and she was on there and she was basically asked to give her thoughts on what she thought about the whole Rachel Nichols fallout with the network and ultimately what she thought about how the network handled it. So for those of you who missed her comments, because this uh, this interview took place on April 5th, so about a month or so ago, just catching wind of it now, we want you guys to take a listen to some of the things that she, that she had to say in this interview and then we're going to come back and react to it. So take a listen to what she had to say here. I would have loved to have uh, spoken to you, heard your thoughts in the midst of last year when all the drama with Countdown was going on. <laughs> Uh, I, I know you you tweeted something quite cryptic about it. I think you were referring to that. Karma's a bitch. <laughs> it well, is what honestly, it is. <laughs> what, what were your thoughts? Come on. Oh, I loved us. it. Well, it's it, that's nothing. That person, that's what she does. And so that was nothing. She did stuff to me. Like, she's the one that did all the stuff. Like, she's the one that plays that game. And, uh, you know, to watch the both of them sort of engage in the media wars I don't, look, I don't think either one came out looking great. Uh, it was just not good look for either one of them, but it's also, it wasn't shocking to any of us in that business. Like when you heard the names and who did what, you were just like, yeah, that's about right. Mm. And I, and for me personally, yeah, <laughs> that was, yeah, that's- Were you sitting back too. like loving it or like- what, I what didn't even the... know at first. You didn't know? What do you no, mean? Where I, were I'm, you? Like I, I was, you know, I was living, but I don't, I'm trying to remember who texted me first about it maybe i just wasn't like on the internet or something as right. much but yeah and then i went on there i was like oh that's oh uh, that's funny and so yeah that was yeah i just i mean you know you know, you have to remember like somebody leaked it and somebody taped yeah. it and somebody you know people don't do that when they like you so maybe we take an inner look at ourselves could i ask how do you feel like the company handled it <sighs> that was a tough one but like I am a person who knows that they, they had chances to handle that way before that moment. Um, they had chances to tell certain people not to behave certain ways and they didn't take that chance. It's like a child. You tell that child, you know, when you're eight that you stop acting like this, then hopefully by the time they're 12, you don't really have that issue anymore. But when you allow that child to continue to do and do and do, whether you, it's because you don't want the confrontation, you don't want the headache, then don't be surprised. There's no reason why a person stops the bad behavior if no one's telling them to. There's no punishment, there's no repercussions. And so, yeah, it, it was, that was there. They kind of made their bet on that one. And then that's why I think everybody came out looking awful. Now, if you listen to the audio, the person she was referring to uh, was Rachel Nichols and the comments that she had to say, that she had to make about uh, Maria Taylor, basically saying that, you know, it was a diversity hire. Um, and she didn't want to be a part of that initiative, right? She didn't want them to make that type of hire at her expense, right? That was basically what that was about. And a lot of people came out there and um, basically, um, you know, made their thoughts known about that situation. Um, I think at the time, if we're going to go, if we're going to look at this retrospectively, I think at the time, ESPN 
wasn't actually sure about the type of company they wanted to be from a messaging standpoint. We knew what they were from an operational standpoint. They were a sports media company, right? It talked about sports. But when it come, when it came to their messaging, I think the company, you know, they weren't sure. You know, at one point, um, you know, ESPN was making comments about, you know, diversity related issues. They were talking about politics. They became um, very, very uh, political at times. Um, and I think it was something that ultimately confused their audience. And they started to make, in my personal opinion, they started to make decisions based on what they felt their audience would want them to do. It was no longer based on what they themselves wanted to do. I think at one point they just started to pander. They're like, okay, we're going to hire this person because we think that will look good. We're going to get this person to say this or get that person to say this. And I think ultimately it sent mixed signals to the people that were tuning in on a daily basis uh, to watch their shows. I think ultimately, uh, you know, that's what, that, that's what, that's what happened. I think their messaging just became um, unclear and uh, you could tell. Right. You could tell by a lot of the decisions that they were making. A lot of it seemed to be, in some cases, uh, reactionary. In our case, a Dreamers Pro, to give you guys an example of what I'm talking about, we don't cover politics whatsoever. Right. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. I hate politics. I hate everything about it. Right. I, at one point, I was really, really into politics. But once I realized that a lot of these guys are just playing, you know, um, playing games with people's lives, I just didn't want anything to do with it. Right. I hate politics on a personal level. So if I don't like politics on a personal level, why in God's name would I come up here? And start talking about politics makes no sense and that's the first thing secondly um you know this is a this is this this is a sports channel right so we cover sports we talk about the nba and some of the, some in some cases we talk about larger issues outside the nba but i'm not versed at politics i'm not a politician i don't know the political jargon that a lot of these guys are using to come up here and really talk about i'm not ben shapiro for example to give you guys an example right ben shapiro um, has some strong conservative views, but he's he's in his lane. He's talking about politics because that's his lane. I've never heard Ben uh, um, Ben Shapiro talk about the NBA or anything like that. Now, am I saying that he's incapable of talking about the NBA? No, but that's not his cup of tea, right? He talks about politics, and to me, it would make absolutely no sense to delve into something that I'm not good at, right? And, and on top of that, something that I don't like to begin with. So why would I do that? Um, I certainly wouldn't do it because I wanted to pander to people. It makes no sense, and I think us taking that position it sends a clear it sends a clear message to our audience, right? So people come here, they know what they're getting, right? They know what they're getting, right? If we decided to hire other personalities in the future to talk sports, they pretty much know what these guys are going to be talking about. That's sports. In the case of ESPN, however, I think they found themselves in a mess uh, because they didn't know what the hell they were doing. Yeah, you know, I had one guy saying this, one guy saying that. So I think at the end, um, you know, it, it, it hurt and you could tell that uh, you could tell by some of the comments that, you know, Michelle Beadle made at the end. She was like, you know, she just thought that it was just one big it was it was just a total mess based on some of the things that she said. So that's what she had to say a year later or so after the dust settled. And really, my question to you guys is this. What are your thoughts on what she had to say about the Rachel Nichols aspect of it? Basically saying that, listen, I'm not surprised because this is, it sounds like something. Uh, that this person would do, right? I'm not surprised by what I'm hearing um, out of that camp. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is this, and really it's the larger question. Do you think that uh, ESPN has recovered um, from uh, the drama that they experienced last year? Obviously, from a rating standpoint, we've done videos on this. They've bounced back. They're actually having record um, viewing, you know, uh, viewership numbers out here, um, you know, this year, at least we did a video about that about a week or so ago, but what do you think, how do you think overall from a messaging standpoint, do you think the company has recovered, um, or not, whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll definitely catch you guys on the next episode.